Hello, my name is Matt and this is Pixel Burn, where I take a sarcastic look at some of the more important, interesting or irritating things to have happened in the week's gaming news. Peter Molyneux needs little to no introduction for most people, a BAFTA winning industry veteran with some of the greatest titles in gaming under his belt, such as Dungeon Keeper, Syndicate and Magic Carpet, to name but a few. Molyneux, nevertheless, also has a reputation for ever so slightly over-promising things. Or, to put it more bluntly, 90% of everything he ever says about the game he's working on has about as much chance of happening as a polar vortex in hell. Presuming you ignore everything the Italian poet Dante Alighieri had to say on such matters. From his claims, the original fable would be a living, breathing world in which trees grew in real time, to the cancelled Project Milo in which you used a connect to interact with a computer-generated boy, Peter Molyneux's name has become gamer shorthand for overhype and inevitable disappointment. It's happened so many times now, the headline, Peter Molyneux disappoints people, is barely even newsworthy anymore. Until now, that is, no longer content with letting down mere mortals, Peter Molyneux has, according to Eurogamer this week, gone one step beyond by disappointing none other than God himself. That is, if God came from Edinburgh and his name was Brian Henderson. You see, Brian here was the winner of Curiosity, the first game released by Molyneux's then brand new development studio 22 Cans back in 2013. Although calling it a game is something of a stretch, it was a sort of massively multiplayer smartphone app that was part lottery, part social experiment, where players competed to be the first to dig their way to the centre of a ginormous virtual cube for a life-changing prize contained within. Despite the fact it was Peter Disappointment Molyneux calling the prize life-changing, this didn't deter thousands of people from working together to reach the centre of the cube, flaying it away layer by layer one brick at a time. Only the first person to reach the centre would win the prize however, and the winner would be under no obligation to let the rest of the world know what it was. But people still contributed anyhow. It was rather sweet in a way. Like so many jammy sods before him, Brian turned up right at the last minute and chose a quiet section of the cube to tap away at. An hour or so later, he became the first person on Earth to witness the mysterious secret lying at the very heart of the Molyneux configuration. The box. You opened it. We came. Nah, not really. Instead, an email address for 22 cans popped up on Brian's screen and after giving them his personal details, he received a link to a video of Peter Molyneux standing inside an empty white room, like he was the architect in an even more disappointing version of The Matrix Reloaded. That wasn't the prize by the way. I know we're talking about Peter Molyneux here but come on, give the man some credit. No, the video was to explain to Brian, and the rest of the world he was kind enough to share it with, exactly what he had won. That prize being the role of God of Gods in 22 Can's next title, Goddess, touted as a return to Molyneux's god sim roots in games like Populous and Powermonger. As top god of goddess, Brian would reign over all the other in-game players, able to dictate events and other things about the game, so long as he could hold on to his position. In addition, Brian would also receive 1% of the game's revenue for the duration of his divine tenure. The catch, however, was that Brian's term as god of gods would only begin after 22 Cans implemented multiplayer into goddess, and, well, that hasn't happened yet. Much like a lot of things that were promised to be in goddess. Unfortunately for Brian, the contract he signed with 22 Cans didn't stipulate a time limit for them to implement the game's hub world feature, which would allow for God vs God multiplayer and, more importantly, let Brian be the revenue earning deity he was meant to be. Meanwhile, Brian claims all communication between himself and 22 Cans dried up not long after signing his contract, despite Brian emailing them monthly requesting updates. Until recently, the last contact he'd received from 22 Cans was an email in January 2014, telling him someone would be in touch. According to Molyneux, the multiplayer was delayed because Goddess's publisher forced 22 Cans to switch the server architecture they were going to use, meaning they had to develop all new tech. Yes, Goddess has a publisher, even though the whole point of its original Kickstarter in 2012 was so 22 Cans wouldn't have to go via the traditional publisher route of games development, allowing Molyneux to develop the game he always wanted to without interference and yada 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 bollocks bollocks. Speaking of Kickstarter, many backers have also yet to receive the rewards they were promised, such as the making of book, student forums and a Linux version of the game. Meanwhile, the PC version of Goddess has languished in early access on Steam since September 2013, still technically in beta even though 22 cans are charging 15 quid for it. Which didn't stop Molyneux releasing a free version for mobile platforms supported by in-game microtransactions, the revenue from which Brian hasn't seen a single penny of. 
and it's not as though the game hasn't made any money, far from it. According to Molyneux himself, the game has made millions and millions. Don't believe me? Here it is straight from the horse's mouth. Yes, Goddess has made millions and millions. He could be exaggerating, of course. That is kind of Peter Molyneux's thing, after all. According to this same update video, the team working on Goddess has shrunk and is now led by designer Konrad Nazinski, a Kickstarter backer who didn't like the direction the game was going and worked for 22 cans for free until he could wangle his way into a position to make some changes. Conrad now has the unenviable task of turning the whole thing around before an army of lynch mobs descend upon Guildford. Conrad absolutely loves um, Goddess, I think. Your suffering will be legendary even in hell. Meanwhile, almost everyone else at 22 Cans has moved over to a new project with the working title of The Trail, a project Peter Molyneux describes as an experience never seen before that entertains the idea of communication beyond words by means of music, art and so on, and will supposedly make up for what Goddess lacked in narrative, progress and reward. Funny how he refers to Goddess in the past tense there, and by funny I do of course mean you fucking what mate? Some of you might have expected me to really rip into Molyneux on this one, and normally I would be a lot more brutal. Except PC gaming site Rock Paper Shotgun beat me to it with a blistering interview by John Walker, who gave Peter Molyneux the kind of verbal thrashing you simply don't see often enough in the gaming press. I mean, how many interviews have you read that start with the question, do you think that you're a pathological liar? Ouch. And it only gets more brutal from there. So much so, in fact, that a number of games journalists have actually come out and criticised Walker for being too hard on Peter Molyneux. Others, meanwhile, have praised him for taking the sort of tough, uncompromising stance that the gaming press is usually far too spineless to do. You don't need to be a genius to work out where I stand on the matter. The very same day as his evisceration at the hands of Rock Paper Shotgun, Molyneux also conducted an interview with Laura Kate Dale in The Guardian in which he announced, perhaps unsurprisingly, that he will not be speaking to the gaming press ever again. Which is probably for the best, because however disappointed people were with Fable, Fable 2, Black and White or the movies, Peter Molyneux has rarely made an objectively terrible game. They might not meet expectations and some might be a bit mediocre or full flat, but they're rarely absolutely awful like half the shit clogging up steam. Had Molyneux not hyped them to the hills, I feel people would regard his games with much more fondness than they do now. And for all the criticism the Fable series received, at least Lionhead tried to do something a bit different with each one, even if Fable 3 was a gigantic step backwards from 2 in so many bloody ways. Molyneux has always struck me as an otherwise nice bloke, but at the mercy of his runaway mouth. A man who gets so caught up in the excitement of his creative projects that it becomes infectious, like a virus that makes you hemorrhage money instead of blood. That doesn't however mean that I excused the way he milked his reputation for public cash and failed to deliver on some of his promises. Gameplay features are one thing, but not giving out Kickstarter rewards and, most importantly, the shameful treatment of Brian the God Who Never Was are failures on Molyneux's part that need to be addressed quick bloody sharpish. So this step back from the media spotlight is probably the best thing for him, although I won't be taking any bets on how long it lasts. This isn't the first time he's promised to rein his mouth in, and I very much doubt this will be the last we see of him. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Oh well, on to brighter things now. The team behind Nightcry, aka Project Scissors, have released some new extended gameplay footage, even though they have sadly yet to meet their Kickstarter goal, which they bloody well should if there's any justice in this world, because Nightcry looks like everything a Clock Tower fan like me could want from a spiritual successor to Clock Tower by the actual creator of Clock Tower, such as the hiding, the scissor-wielding antagonist, the isolated setting, the horror movie style deaths and the sheer vulnerability of it all. Plus it's nice to actually see some actual gameplay footage attached to a Kickstarter, instead of a cotton candy wish-wash of dreams, promises and concept art. Nightcry has barely a week to go until its Kickstarter finishes and I genuinely hope it meets its goal. Failing that, I hope the mobile version is enough of a success to fund the PC version the team so obviously would rather be developing because more horror games that aren't shitty slender or amnesia knockoffs are always welcome, especially by me. And finally, Bethesda announced this week that they will be holding their very own conference at this year's E3. A full-on stage show similar to those of Ubisoft and EA at previous E3s with, presumably, a lineup of games to show off. Yes! Finally, after years of waiting, this, this is when we'll finally get the news that we've all been waiting for. A post-nuclear sequel to a game that doesn't want to set the world on fire, but just wants to start a flame in your heart. 
You all know what I'm talking about, folks. That's right. Terminator Future Shock sequel, here we come. Alright, so there probably won't be a sequel to Terminator Future Shock. We can, however, perhaps expect announcements for a new Elder Scrolls game and, my personal hope, Dishonored 2. Which reminds me, I really should get round to replaying Dishonored at some point, because it's that bloody great. We may even get to see some of Doom 4, which so far has only been seen by a bunch of lucky fans at last year's QuakeCon. Fallout 4 will be the game on most people's lips, however, particularly if it ends up looking as visually gorgeous as Skyrim did. Although, let's hope that's all it shares with Skyrim. I still haven't forgotten those shitty Broken Bards college quests, Bethesda. No lineup has been confirmed, however, and while it's inevitable Bethesda will be unveiling some new games, they could still be bastards and not give us anything about a possible Fallout 4. So don't dust off your Vault Boy, Bobbleheads and Brotherhood of Steel armour just yet. And if they announce a sequel to Rage instead of Fallout 4, I will be most bloody annoyed. That's all for this episode of Pixel Burn. If you liked it, please do let me know and let your friends, family and Brian Henderson know as well. At the very least, I hope you found it tolerable. If you didn't like it, however, then rest assured, Peter Molyneux has eternity to know your flesh. We have such sights to show you.